Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I got my ink tense pencils out and some MFT stamps for a lesson packed with tips. First, the supplies. I had the little doctor and nurse from MFT, and you can stamp them in either direction, left or right, and they will interact differently, and you can see a different orientation of them on the blog. Ink Tense Pencils, this is my set that I have, and I swatched out a few colors that I thought I might use. Got out my Quiet Sharp pencil sharpener, that sucker needs emptied big time. And my brushes, there's a 12 and an eight, and the eight is the one I use the most in paper crafting, so I think that is the one I will be using throughout this entire video. So there are the colors, and I don't use them all in this, but I decided for some skin tone, one would start with the 1720 and one would start with the 1740 and see how that goes. I stamped one of them, the one on the left is on the Canson XL, and the one on the right is on Arches Cold Press. And I wanted kind of a direct comparison of the two. I knew that the, cold, the Canson XL cold press, and they still call it cold press in some, on some websites, that that paper is a student grade paper. And it's, I don't know if it's not made of maybe as much cotton as the other one, but the, uh, the regular Canson cold press has a bumpier texture to it. You can feel the cotton. It's a, a much softer surface, but it's bumpier and it, it's just more fibrous. You can really tell the difference when you touch the two of them. But I know that for a lot of people who have trouble with watercolor pencils and watercolor, sometimes the cheaper paper is easier and sometimes it's harder. And I wanted to have a real direct comparison to see both of them. So I did my coloring onto their skin tones just to see um, that, that I got both of them about the same with the same colors. And then using my brush to apply the water, I'm pushing the color toward the shadow area and allowing that to be kind of, that's where my brush ends so it doesn't dump a lot of color in the highlight area. And the little girl, I put the pink in before I started applying anything. Sometimes we try to put the pink in afterward in the cheeks if you want pink, and that can end up actually being a little bloopy on top. But if you end up doing it while you're watercoloring it, and while you're doing your original coloring, it sort of blends in a little bit nicer. The XL paper is easier for blending. You don't end up having to work at it quite as hard, and you'll see the difference as we go. But the Canson XL paper also takes the color differently. And here you can see it's a different tone on the one on the right-hand side, on the Arches Cold Press. The reason for this I think this is the reason for this, is because of the texture of the paper. The cold press will hold more of the color on the paper itself because it has those nooks and crannies to hold it all in there. And it also scrapes more off of your pencil because it's got all those bumps on it, if that makes sense. And it, it's just going to hold things differently than, than the smoother paper. The smoother paper, however, is going to give you less of those little bumps, and for some people, trying it on that will work better. And it's entirely up to you what you decide you want to do on your cards. If you have both papers, try them out and see. Just see what the difference is. But I found throughout this whole project, all the coloring that I did, the colors were definitely richer on the Arches Cold Press, even if some of them blended more easily on the Canson XL. So I, I put that out there for you to just think about whatever you're interested in doing or what your struggles are. If you want that color to be really rich, then use your, your uh, cold press paper instead. And look at the difference in that one. I mean, it's not that much more pencil. You saw when I colored them, I didn't press really hard on that one, but look how much more color is on the cold press then was on the, the Kenson XL. I even can take my brush and lift off some of that so that the face doesn't get too dark. It, one of the big differences you'll be able to see here too is in her little outfit, her little nurse's scrubs. In the kinds of color, I mean, even just look at the color on the paper and then look at the color on, on, on the Kenson XL versus the arches. 
it looks purplier. It, it just has this look because of that surface. It is going to be about the same color when we start watercoloring it, but that is one of the reasons for the difference between them is, is the texture of that paper. And again, it will be easier to, to blend it over here on the XL, but a lot more of that pigment is going to leave the paper and be on my brush. So you're going to see how much lighter that one's gonna come out than the one on the other paper. Same as the skin tones on the face and that sort of thing. And so I'll just spread that color around a little bit. And you can compensate for this, of course, if you want darker, richer color, by putting more pigment on the Canson XL and trying to be more intentional about really loading it up with color. You get a similar effect with other brands of watercolor pencil, but I find that I have the most trouble with these ink tense pencils and trying to water them out a little bit more completely because they tend they tend to hold the lines more. So the, the ones that I find that I like the best, I think, are the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. They just seem to work really great for me. And there's a video either just happened recently or coming up soon with a fine art piece that I did in the Albrecht Durer. So you'll be able to see what those look like on cold press. So finishing coloring out these guys, um, you probably noticed I did her shoes a little bit. I used the, pig the paint or the pigment that was already on my brush to add pigment to her shoes rather than actually coloring any on there. And I'll do the same thing here with the shadows on the jacket. I already have color on my brush and so I can get this really soft grayish color to put shadows on a white coat by picking up pigment from the pants that are there because the pants are really heavily laden with color and while they're still wet I can pick up some of that color and use it almost like a little palette. And so rather than jumping up to do the hair right now I decided to do the jacket because the pants were still wet. And I was waiting on doing the hair by the way so that I didn't end up touching the hair and having it bleed into the faces. So just tried to jump around to different areas of the, the picture. And I'll have some dark hair for the little boy. I'll do some lighter hair for the little girl. And of course he needed a nice dark tie to go with his nice dark pants. And notice how that dark color makes the white jacket pop and be more of a white jacket because it's got that contrast. Same thing with his pants. If he was wearing white pants, his he wouldn't be standing out much at all. He would just be disappearing into the paper. I used a dark bark brown for his hair and I'm uh, gonna watercolor that out. And again, the same thing with the other, uh, the other colors. It's just gonna be much richer and darker on the right-hand side on that, that Canson Arches. Uh, <laughs> Canson Arches, I can't, they own both of them. So I try not to use the word Canson when I'm using the word Arches because it gets confusing. Um, the Canson XL and Canson Arches are both manufactured by the same folks. So I used the lighter colors, um, some of the color that was used on her face for her hair as well, just in different proportions. And again, it will get much darker on the one on the right hand side. And it takes a little more scrubbing sometimes to get the color to fully move and get rid of some of those little, little bits. If you struggle with some of those little bits not watering out, let them sit for just a second. Don't let it completely dry and then go back and try to move the color again, scrub around, because sometimes just that water will allow it to break up a little bit. And here's another one of those areas where you're gonna be able to see the difference between the two papers and how they react by looking at this shadow that I'm putting behind them, drawing the shadow out from their feet going out behind them, and then creating a shadow that kind of has the shape of that shoe and then just goes off into the distance in a very generic kind of flat shape behind the two of them. But look at how dark this one's gonna get. Just immediately it is much richer in color than on the Canson XL. The last finishing touches, since I now have some of that black pigment still left on my brush, is to add a shadow here on the left side of the jacket, which I realized I had forgotten. 
and trying to pick up some color. The one on the left dried too much by then, so I picked up some from the card on the right. Helpful to have two cards going at once. And then just threw a tiny bit of that color onto the clipboard itself. Finished off the card by die cutting it with an A2 stitch die from MFT, putting it on some pink cardstock. And then I also decided to stamp the card with the opposite orientation of the two little doctor and nurse. So you can see how they interact differently, whether you're doing them left to right or right to left. And that card, as well as all the other cards are over on the blog, all that good stuff as always, if you need to pin something to your Pinterest page to remember it. And I will see you guys again later. Have a really awesome day. Go out and make something beautiful and I will see you later on. Thanks. Bye-bye.